Nadia Munchkin, and you're listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 177. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James. Did you forget about how many episodes we have done already? Wow. <laughs> yeah, my numbering skills are not that good. You're getting old, Norman. You're getting Shut old. Up. Shut up. Ah. Also joining us today is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. Hey, Ro. Also joining us is King. Hello, everyone. Hey, King. I left my mic in there. <laughs> yes. Hello, everyone. I'm back <laughs> with a vengeance. Yay. As it be known as the might of the king shall... Ah, I forgot my speech. Sorry. <laughs> good, good. That's, that's, that's good to know that you forgot the speech. Nice. Uh, it's cool. Better than forgetting the episode number. <laughs> Whoa! Just fired already. <laughs> Uh, anywho, also joining us is Twy. Greetings, mortals. <laughs> Hello, Twy. And our guest for this week is, well, guess why don't you introduce yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Hello, everybody. I'm Mad Munchkin, freelance artist, uh, self-employed freelance artist, might I add, but probably most well-known for my YouTube stuff where I analyze various cartoon shows or full-length animated movies, uh, including MLP, of all things. <laughs> what was I thinking? You are now officially my senpai in all matters, everything. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Mad Munchkin's best senpai. <laughs> yes, she is. So I'm told. <laughs> so I'm told. <laughs> Everyone loves the hat, what can I say? <laughs> Not the hat, it's the fact that you do everything I do, but better. It's amazing. Oh, come on. That that ah. that hat that hat is where you store the rest of your creativity. Is that it's so big, it, you cannot contain all of it inside you. You need to put it on that hat. <laughs> yes. I don't know what she called Munchkin. She actually hides a really creative Munchkin under the hat. That's, <laughs> That's my head cannon, and I am not going to change it. You know they, uh-huh. uh, it. Head cannon because it's a hat. It's <laughs> it's like the film Ratatouille. I've got a rat under there that controls me. Oh. It makes me. Tr- it's, it's, it's 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 a rat. But it's a little <laughs> pony controlling you. <laughs> Uh, well, so how is everyone? How is everyone? I'll start off with James. How are you doing, man? No, no, don't start with me. My stories are always filled with depression. So actually, lately I have been awesome. Uh, <laughs> things are getting a lot better here. Uh, got my airplane ticket for Bronny Scott. I'm finishing one of the logos for them, and I am here Ooh. doing another commission. I am inking it as I am talking with you guys. Awesome, awesome. Sadly, I cannot tell you what it is because it's super not safe for work, so I shouldn't be sharing it at all. <laughs> oh, Sorry. Wow. Maybe we'll just have to wait then. Oh, yeah, you will have to wait. And, Ru, what about you, man? How has your week been? Uh, I've been well, busy with up. stuff. <laughs> and, yeah, I got myself a job. I've been doing it for a while. Not very happy with it, but can't do anything. I've been assigned to it. It was against my will, but I'll manage somehow. At least I'll have money to visit Scotland, and hopefully I'll be able to go to Brony Scott. <gasps> hopefully. I don't know. We'll wait and see. I yeah, can't see right now. Everyone's coming to Scotland, because that's where all the cool people are. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Of course. I know the cool <laughs> weather is as well. Take a, take some yeah, to, to because of recent events. Yeah, I have no comment. <laughs> There's a reason we boarded up Scotland with a big wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yes. to take the trouble to the Scottish people. We oh. can't handle us. Oh well. Yeah, we can't handle them. We didn't want our class to be lowered. <laughs> uh, they didn't want their class to be raised. England can't even handle the Scots now. Everybody, oh, well. everybody's happy with that decision. Hmm. Hey, what about you, King? What about you? I've been about as busy as I was last time I was here. Only more so, I guess. Oh, wow. How's the training going been, on? The training's going well, uh, apart from the fact that it looks like they've closed position. So I've, I'm going to have lots of qualifications, but hope not going to have a job at the end of it by the look of it. I mean, I did get a job offer, but it means me moving to a different country. Aww. So, yeah. Thinking about I won't it. be doing that, because if I do that, there's no internet there or signal. Oh, no. So I would literally have to give up all my drawing, all my videos, this podcast, and, uh, yeah, so I'm not going to do it. Oh, no. Well, I do hope you get something, man. I do hope you get something. All that hard work and not getting anything sucks. People notice me. Please, senpai. You, senpai, notice me. <laughs> but anyway. Sending senpai good down. vibes to you, man. Sending good vibes. <laughs> That's the best I can do. Sorry. Um, Take me with you. <laughs> what? No, you're not my type. <laughs> um, anyway, Twy, what about you, man? I'm good. I've 
didn't hear anything Kick said. I wasn't noticing him. <laughs> Reading fanfic while being thoroughly interested in the conversation at hand. <laughs> nice. How can yeah. you do both? Reading on my phone. And what about you, Maddie? I'm doing good. I've had a lot of stuff to do for the last um, few weeks or so because um, the if you guys if for those of you listening that didn't know um, the I had to stop working ages ago a couple of months ago actually because my old computer just decided to just stop working altogether. But um, yeah, long story short, I'll go into that more detail later maybe. Long story short, I'm back set up now and I will be back on YouTube on the 3rd of August. It was supposed to be today, but uh, someone's gone and taken away the tablet that had all the video footage I took of me unboxing my uh, new computer. (laughs) They've taken it away with them on the weekend. I was like, I have not finished uploading the videos to Google Drive yet. Oh, well. Oh, well, indeed, well, indeed. Well, at least you're set so, up now. And I'm seeing, well, on yes. your, what's this, Facebook page about you unboxing the whole setup? Yes. And that looks good. That it's, looks um, really good. Very similar to what I had before, but just, um, a lot. It's on a better, um, layout now. And it's just, productivity is going to be increased so much better. And hopefully, unlike the last one, it won't stop working after just two years. <laughs> But we'll see. <laughs> well, I hope you hope this setup works. I hope this setup works. So, yeah. Maddie, what do you generally do? Like, I do see you have a YouTube and also a DeviantArt, and I see you art and draw. So, what's your specialty? Usually, it's um, concept art and design. I used to do for um, video game companies or mostly independent ones as well mainstream ones I can't mention unfortunately oh. but uh also did some for in- indie movie companies um character concept arts um like human characters and creature characters and things like that and now it's more of a focus on actual analyzing art in the animation industry and posting videos on YouTube about that as well as everything else that I've been doing and the YouTube thing is kind of taken over. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's fine. I enjoy it. YouTube seems to have a way of taking over one person's life. Absolutely. Any social network does to into you today anyway. Don't even get me started on Twitter. I've been stuck on it for weeks. <laughs> I only just started using Twitter as well as, a, as like Facebook and uh I don't use Tumblr very often at all, although I do Good. have one. Mm. I don't use it, really, so... (laughs) Good, good. Step away from it, seriously. It will Um, suck your life and leave you with nothing. Ah, Mm. a bit like the MLP fandom, then. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, very much like it. Yeah, exactly the same. (laughs) Oh, wow. That is not meant to be taken seriously. (laughs) Yeah, we're joking, people. No, you're not joking. Everything you say is still your fire. Great, everybody's (laughs) happy. Everybody's mad now. Nice. But anyway, anyway, um, before I officially start, I need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is, favorite character? Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie? Pinkie Pie! Alright, why Pinkie, Pinkie Pie? Pinkie Pie is my favorite character. Why Pinkie? I made a video about why Pinkie Pie is best pony. And it's basically because to me she's the most authentic one out of the whole group. And um, she's just so hyperactive and, um, you know, breaks the fourth wall and kind of... Without characters like that, it's like, yes, you're watching an animated show, let's make it obvious and, you know, not hide that fact that the show is self-aware. With characters like, uh, Pinkie Pie, she's, she's so, um, annoying and loud, but she's also very supportive of anybody and everybody she meets, regardless of whether they're an antagonist or a protagonist. They can you? <laughs> She kind of treats everybody more or less the same. She just runs up to them and introduces herself straight away and tries to make them feel welcome wherever they are, which I really admire that confidence and, uh, you know, just doesn't really have any hang-ups or... She's very impulsive, which might be a bad thing, but um I don't know. I just find her really adorable, both both in her design and her personality. I don't know, just... Alright. Yeah. So Yeah, some... I, I agree Twilight is best pony. <laughs> but no, you see you didn't say it right. It's pronounced P 
Hinky Pie. Twilight Sparkle. Yes, I know. Do you have any weird way to say rarity? Actually, oh, oh, this is going to be. Your grammar straight. No, I'm sorry. (laughs) We can all agree that rarity is worst pony. (laughs) Well, I can agree that rarity is best cow, anyway. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) Oh wow. Ah, but but anywho, our favorite episode. Uh, it's kind of a tie between um, Lesson Zero and Party of One. Ooh, crazy ponies. Mm. Why does everyone like the crazy? Because the crazy is fun, especially in the show. There's one thing I've learned: it's very sticky, dick and crazy. <laughs> so, oh for, my god, Kim, come on! For, I for resist, me, I'm sorry. <laughs> for me, just episodes like that that deal with uh, you know <laughs> psychotic episodes. <laughs> it's it allows the animators to just go crazy with expressions, and you know they kind of bend the rules a little bit with what the characters can and can't do, especially if they actually go in, like into what. They're actually thinking like in um party of one. I don't know, that was really the episode for me that made me fall in love with the show in a more concrete way, I guess. <laughs> hmm. Alright, so do well, crazy ponies are fun. Crazy ponies are fun. Yeah, but it was also because that party of one it deals with you know, worrying that your friends aren't being real with you, that they're just pretending to um tolerate you and just worrying that you're not accepted for who you are and obviously a character like Pinkie Pie cannot change who she is because she is so authentic, she doesn't know how to be anything else. So like when she, she starts to worry that people don't accept her, she just she just breaks down. I don't know, it's just the things like that in any show I I'm really drawn to because <laughs> I can really I think anybody can relate to that kind of feeling of worrying that you're not accepted. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> well, that's exactly what do you what do you think of uh, Pinkie Pie's pers- uh, alternate personality like that pink amino with the uh, droopy hair and uh, the the crazy eyes? Yeah, the the fandom has taken it a lot further than the show has, obviously. But um, I really like the concept of her almost having a kind of split personality kind of thing, where it's it's like it's like a Jekyll and Hyde thing, except. The the hide is in my head. It's um, actually who she is all the time, like the mad crazy one. And then when she turns into the pink Mina, it, it's like she just loses all of her joy. She kind of literally deflates. <laughs> Maybe yeah. because she comes from the rock quarry, and that's how every one of her sisters yeah. and her parents look. <laughs> yeah. So how did you become a fan of the show? Um, that's quite a long story. I'll try and tell it in a different way. Basically, in um, 2013 was a really difficult year for me because a lot of my very close friends who were into um, similar stuff to me, um, you know, art and animated movies and shows like, like MLP, they all had to move away at the exact same time for various reasons. And I lost touch with them because of it um you know they moved away for work or their partners moved for work or just you know whatever reason it was and um i discovered when they left i didn't have the same outlet that i had before to geek out about the things that i loved this was before i had much of a i wasn't really on youtube or or that i was on deviant art and uh, various other places but I wasn't on YouTube at that time and usually what I do to cheer myself up in times like that, I usually watch Disney movies and, you know, things like that. So I stuck on uh, Disney Hercules, which is my favourite Disney show movie even, and I found it wasn't really doing, making me happy. So I was like, right, I need to find something else because it was reminding me too much of my friends. It was actually making me feel worse (laughs) because that was one of our favourite movies to sit and watch together. I started to go online and have a look to see what I needed to find something new and I kept seeing all these pony memes everywhere and I was like ponies? Ponies? No! That's not my thing at all! I'm not a girly girl (laughs) you know, (laughs) pastel coloured ponies no thank you, I'd rather watch like you know, I don't know, uh, Mummy's Alive or (laughs) uh, Batman the Animated Series or you know, just anything that's not deliberately geared towards girls so I just avoided it like the plague Maybe I should have avoided it like the plague in hindsight. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I, 
I wanted to uh, watch the show just to see what it was like because I saw a couple of clips from um, episodes like Lesson Zero and Party of One and I was like, oh, this animation is really expressive. And then I got all confused because it was like, hang on, My Little Pony Show, this actually has effort. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like uh, all the other um, uh, My Little Pony shows with pro- the possible exception of Gen 1, um, didn't the animation was really low quality and that kind of put me off the show altogether. Um, not to mention the generic characters, you couldn't really tell them apart. Right. And I decided the first episode I wanted to watch was just one that I happened to click on after I watched some clips. It was Cantalot Wedding. For me, um, regardless of all of the terrible plot holes that are in the episode, which I won't go into, the episode itself was the perfect episode for me to start with because it was so Disney-esque in its structure. It reminded me um, of the Disney movie The Little Mermaid and, you know, Cadence was um, being impersonated and was going to marry somebody just for, you know, to take over the kingdom and everything. And uh, with that episode, just like I said earlier, just because it was so Disney-esque, it was the perfect episode for me to start with. And... um So I started, right, I'm going to start from the beginning to get to know these characters because they all seemed really interesting and fun and um, there was, like, drama and conflict that I didn't expect to see in a show that was My Little Pony. I was like, eh, this this is actually good. I like this. I need to watch more. So... (laughs) So I started from the beginning and that was it. I was hooked, really. And, yeah. Were you, and... were you looking forward to the episode where they introduced Shen in armor for the first time and then realized, oh no, they just pulled him out of thin air? No, not really. I just wanted to get to know the main six more because I just fell in love with them and especially Pinkie Pie. You know, the, the party canon was like, wow, what was that? You know? oh. and, yeah, I don't know. Just... I just fell in love with the show and uh, it it hadn't happened for a while and it kind of rekindled my love for animation back then. So, yeah, <laughs> that's how I got into it, yeah, really. It's good, it's good. That's cool. That's awesome. I tried to keep that short, fail. Uh, is yeah. that, good, actually, cool. you could have kept going for another hour. I could have been listening because <laughs> this is really fascinating. I never know, <laughs> never know somebody to start with the season finale of season two. Like all yeah. that advanced into into the show, like you you basically started when the animation was like at its peak with uh, the earliest uh, the earliest seasons, like mm-hmm. in 2012. That is as best as the animation could get. So, Mary, uh, what do your family and friends think about your love for this show? Um, they kind of take it in their stride, to be honest, because I'm already kind of considered to be the black sheep of my family, <laughs> and you know, still watching animations and things and. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you're so weird and you like this stuff. And I'm like, hey, give it a chance. Watch it. You might like it. You never know. And if you don't, that's okay too. But, you know, don't judge me for something I like if you've never given it a chance. That's not fair. But, um, yeah, they they think it's weird. And I have shown some clips to my dad. Um, one of them was um, when Rainbow Dash is trying to teach Fluttershy how to cheer. So that one. <laughs> and Classic. he's actually adopted that. As a phrase that he says every now and then, Yay. he just goes, "Yay!" <laughs> <laughs> in his own little word, in his own little way, and I was like, uh, "You're a sheltered brony, aren't you?" <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> um, yeah, and just various other clips. Like, um, I I'm terrible at remembering the name of the episodes, but uh, when Rarity is um, forced to dig up gems for the the diamond uh, diamond yeah. She's like, I love whining. You want to hear whining? This is whining. <laughs> my sister <laughs> and um, some of my friends have adopted that saying. Even though they've never seen the show, I showed them that clip and they've just adopted it. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's I love cool. Yeah. So yeah, they don't they don't think it's weird or anything. They kind of accept it, but that's because I was just up front with them, and I was like, hey, look, I'm into this show now. And they're like, oh, cool, you're already into weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh What's <my>. new? <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, all right, that's cool, that's cool. So, I, I don't know where to start. So, I'm going to start off with the obvious, because I'm looking at your YouTube right now, 
Mm-hmm. And I see the progression of almost two years ago, you started with Ponies, which was review the Return of Harmony trailer. Mm, yes. So is that where you first started with the Brony and before that it's just some random videos? Before that, it was um, a lot of the videos that I did before that have been deleted. They were um, like um, videos of me painting or um, doing face paint, things like that. And because I didn't really use YouTube all that op- all that often, and I started doing analysis videos. I started off doing MLP. I started with that show. Didn't actually realize there was such a huge analysis community for MLP already. I just kind of thought, I want to analyze this show because it's, it's a cool show and people should know more about it. Hmm. <laughs> all right, all right. Just wanted to vent and, yeah, be talk about it. All right, so basically you thought of it as, I this has not been done, so I'll just start it. Nope, not the first. Yeah, it was um, just something I wanted to do just as a, as a, a fun side project, really, like to go cool alongside like all the artwork that I do already because I love art but I love talking about art more probably mm-hmm. so <laughs> and I wanted to share it you know I didn't have the same people around me that I could kind of geek out about art with so that's how the YouTube thing started really all right so what did you start it off with like I'm looking here there's a lot of art oh uh, there was um I the first thing it was the first two episodes of MLP and then um, I'm doing it this by memory by the way <laughs> um, The Little Mermaid um, Hercules a few other shows and then like just, just discussing certain topics in the um, art industry like what's better traditional or digital anim- uh, arts or what's better 2D or 3D animation um, you know things things like that and uh, yeah so you, do you review episodes on a regular basis like some of the other reviewers? I haven't done episode reviews that much. I think I've only done maybe four. Usually it's mainly more talking about the actual fandom itself and, uh, you know, <laughs> like people make their original characters and so I, I made videos about the pony generator and, um, uh, character concepts, how to make characters and you know videos like that talking about that kind of thing i think the only episodes i really reviewed was um castle mania return of harmony keep calm and flutter on and my memory is terrible i swear Mm -hmm. um i've done a couple of other ones as well and as well as a video about um why pinkie pie is best pony (laughs) i I seen that i seen that around i seen that around a lot of them they're so essentially you do multiple stuff like talk about movies the episodes talk about some other things you like like video games i I do see video games here some lps i'm assuming did some uh, let's plays um just trying to branch out and do different things i like staying quite eclectic in what i do i don't like doing the same thing over and over and over again there's a difference between uh consistency and repetition Mm. um you know like as much as I love the MLP fandom and the show, I knew that it, there will come a point where this will eventually end and dwindle away, and so it's like, well, lies, slander. To... <laughs> yeah, no, I know, no, but no. Uh, you're absolutely yeah. right. But... I actually, I actually wanted to ask you something regarding that. Uh, yeah. Because what Norman says is, is absolutely right. You do more than just My Little Pony. You do, uh, you you basically review anything that falls on your hands that uh, that catches your interest, which is great. Uh, you yeah. don't focus on just one thing. Do you think that's why so many reviewers slash analysts have ended up walking away from the fandom because they focused so much on My Little Pony that they ended up burning out? I think it was more to do with the fact that certain reviewers um, kind of got stuck in the ruts of making videos that they thought their fans wanted to see instead of making videos about things that got them excited and things they wanted to talk about. And I think doing that will get you in a creative rut and will start an art block kind of thing. And, you know, uh, you'll get really frustrated and uh, you'll you just suddenly just shut the door to certain fandoms altogether if you kind of dive too deep into them and think, I, I can't get out, so I need to do something else. And I think it, it's healthy 
to just explore lots of different things and not just focus on one thing all the time. Hmm. All right. Of course, if you only have one type of, like if you only have hamburgers, it's going to, it's going to get to a point where you, well, you may die because of t- too much grease, but <laughs> you will end up uh, getting sick and tired of hamburgers. You will want to get something new and you will not have hamburgers for like forever. I don't want my love for this fandom or the show to die, so it needs um, room to breathe. You have to kind of, <laughs> you know, go on to something else for a while and go back to it because it is very intense and intoxicating. So, um, oh my God, for me, it? it's it's just really important for me to be able to um, bounce around between different projects as well. And as as an artist, you want to be taken seriously as well. So sometimes if you know, a client or a company is looking for work and they find you and all they see is ponies, they're not going to hire you. You need to, yeah. you know, you need to um, show diversity, you know, and mm-hmm. show, right. yeah, I can draw ponies, but look, I can also, you know, draw birds and horse, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> horses, yeah. people, Rob- and, robots, yeah, I can draw cars, ponies, yeah. I can also draw horses, <laughs> yeah, uh, but, well, and uh, that, people and you... concept character designs and things like that, you know. That kind of goes the same way when you are watching the show. Like, if you only watch MLP, you will also get sick and tired of it. And uh, I actually know a couple of people who came to me saying, dude, I cannot even watch the newest episodes. I'm sick of this. I need to watch something else. I cannot... Like, to them, it feels like a chore. And after a while, it can feel like a chore. And that's where you start to realize, yeah, I might be burning out of this. I need something to change my... uh, uh To change the air. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. well, you you did say that you like a bit of variety. So I'm going to go way back in time and see if this clicks for you or not. Gem okay. and the Holograms. You know what? I I remember watching the show, but I, I'm not familiar with it now at all. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which is bad, I know. It was, um, I the, mean... the only thing that reminded me of it was, um, I don't know if you guys watch um, the Amanda Hagen stuff. <laughs> But, I've heard oh, of her. Um, She's awesome. Yeah, I love the Amanda. She, the Amanda's makeup is inspired by the gems. So, <laughs> yeah. So, really? I thought uh, she was trying to be the Joker. I swear to God, no, I thought she was No, it's to be actually, Joker. well, she changes it for almost every video. So, from what I could see from some of the videos that she's posted, it, it is actually based from or inspired by the, the, the gems in that show. <laughs> Which makes sense. It's more like a glam rock kind of thing, whereas people think it's Joker, but it's not really. It's it's glam rock kind of thing. Anyway, I didn't I didn't grow up with Gem and no, the hologram. I, I remember watching a few episodes, and it was fun. I always get frustrated with literally outrageous. Yeah, I know. I always get frustrated with the misfits. They're evil, like uh, bad people. But you know, talking about gems, did you know that the IDW comic, the Gem comic? Feature star Sunset Shimmer in the comics as a plush pony. <laughs> well, that's cool. I know. You think you can turn to a pony on the GM comic? I know. It's it's so much fun. Like, well, is isn't GM a property of Hasbro as well? Yes, it is. Yes. And that's yeah. why the cameo is there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but I heard the comic's not bad. I I heard it's a good comic at the same time too. And having Sunset there, hey, it's fun. This also relates to the um, announcement that they're making a gem and the holograms movie. People ah. are kind of like, they are already putting a rating on it. They're saying <laughs> that it's going to suck. But they don't realize that nowadays there is a lot of movies uh, starring women that are legit good. Well, and I just because think... just because gems and the Hol- gem and the holograms is based on an old property, that doesn't mean they are going to make it sucky. I mean, give it the benefit of the doubt. Maybe well, it will surprise you. I think you. the setup of the movie is a bit... Not the same as what people wanted because the original setup was about this one girl. She finds a device that can create a solid hologram of her changing into, um, I forgot the name character, Gem probably. And she's the star. And when she's off stage, she just press on a button and she becomes normal girl again. And this one, the movie setup is her becoming popular on YouTube. So, yeah. Well- Makes sense. We I can't relate right. to that at all. <laughs> oh, clearly we can't. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Let's see what they do with it. Keep an open mind. I, I don't, don't mind. I don't, don't, mind. Don't, don't, don't judge a book by its cover. Maybe it will surprise you. Mm, I don't mind. And talking about Sunset, 
The Equestria Girls Friendship Game website just updated and they added in new information about some of the new characters. So, yay! Friendship game. Yes? No? Nobody? Nobody's excited for this. Yay. Norman, do you want me to talk about the movie that's not even out yet? I'm I, going to... I don't know, because... <laughs> Wait, the movie's not out yet? No, not yet. No, it's not out. It's not out until September 26th. Well, when's it going to come out again? People about it as if it's out already. There's a lot of opinions on it. Like, there's a few info here about, like, character bios and whatnot. It's interesting if you want to go check it out. And I don't know. I, I can't say much. I am excited for the movie, though. Yeah, we all are. And there was much rejoicing. Uh, yeah. it is, um, okay. But let's go back to you, Maddie, because you're, you're an awesome guest and nobody wants to talk about the Equestria Girls world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm today the... on the disjointed show. We're going back and forth without order. Yay! So I'm looking at your art here on the Divine Arts, and what do you use to draw? Because this is good. Depends on what ones you're looking at, because there's a mixture of uh, traditional and digital on there. Um, for the digital, nope. Sorry, start with the traditional. Usually with tr- traditional, it's acrylic and uh, gouache paints or um, I did have a set of pens, and I can't remember what they're called. That's good. I need to find them. Don't Where are they? Anyway, there were pens that um, they're when you lay down on the the paper, it it dries completely flat. You know, but sometimes it like if you're using felt tip, it feathers the paper, or you know, it gets darker and darker when you lay more ink over the top. And but with these pens, it doesn't do that. It just kind of, it does sink into the paper a bit, but it doesn't feather the paper at all. And they're oh, absolutely awesome. fantastic. Yeah, they're, they're brilliant for using, doing like quick, uh, like concept sketches on paper and things or just for finished mic? traditional pieces as well. I need to find the name. I need to find yes. them, but I need to leave the mic for a second to find it. Sure, sure, sure. If, um, you, if you find the name or you figure it out, uh, g- give it to me because I want to get one box of those pens as well. I will find them and I will send you the link to them. Yeah, so you can put it in the description of the video or something and I will send it to you as well once let's I hope find them. them to, let's hope they ship to Spain because sometimes the UK oh, doesn't ship probably. Spain. Probably will oh, do. Depends <laughs> if they can get through France. <laughs> With the digital stuff I do, it's usually just drawn in Photoshop and I have a widescreen trust tablet. Nothing fancy. It's uh, I like keeping things simple. Um... Yeah, it's just a cheapy tablet. It's about, I don't know, um, about £80 maybe. I find it, it's kind of quite robust and uh, solid. And sometimes with, with um, the more expensive tablets, like the ones that you draw straight onto the screen and things, which I would love one of those one day, but I'm like, well, if it's not broke, don't fix it or replace it. So <laughs> I've had this kind of... Tablet, um, I've gone through various models of it because they do have a lifespan. They don't last forever. Um, but this one I've had for about two and a half years, maybe. And the longest tablet I've had lasted for about five years. And one only lasted a year, but that was because a little boy sat on it by mistake. Ah. <laughs> I was showing him how to draw and then he picked it up and then he fell over and sat on it and broke it. So. Oh. <laughs> so. Okay, <laughs> but you know, you do some, you do some pretty neat stuff with that tablet. Like, I was watching you on, uh, I was watching you yesterday. Like, I'm dating the video right now. I'm dating this right now. It's the 1st of August. Uh, I was watching you on a stream yesterday, and you were doing a, a hippogriff or a griffon picture. It's looking oh, it's really a, neat. A parroting. It's a winged deer type creature. I think it's like from pagan mythology or, uh, probably I don't know, but the, I can't remember what, what mythology it's from, but it is, it's a creature I've always wanted to draw anyway, and that was the concept of it. It, but thing it is, was but looking the, the, really cool, I have to thank say. Thank you. Thank you very much. The, when I posted it on DeviantArt, people kept saying, ah, oh, it doesn't look much like a deer, and I was like, that's because it's not a deer. It's a parroting. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a hybrid of a bird of prey and a deer. So. <laughs> have you ever, have you ever drawn a Kelpie? No, not yet, but I, I do have that um, in the list of things I need to add to my portfolio. 
So, oh, yeah. definitely you should draw Kelpie. I mean, come on, it's it's mm-hmm. part of uh, the Scottish uh, the Scottish mythology. It's, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Draw the Loch Ness monster while you're at it. <laughs> the the oh, I've uh, fun messy a lot of wearing things. a kilt. <laughs> <laughs> To keep to Tina your uh, art style and all that, as I was looking at your work on the picture, I couldn't help but go back to my uh, Dragonlance illustration be- uh, book that I have here next to me. It's like it, it reminded me a lot of those uh, kinds of illustrations. So y- you're doing great. It's awesome. Oh, thank you. A lot of the uh, stuff that I draw now, it's very, in- it's heavily inspired by, um, you know, you know the actual video game covers you get in like the eighties and nineties. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really those yeah. over the top, awesome, and then they don't look nothing <laughs> like in the video game because it's all pixels. So true. Yeah, because the artwork on that is all traditionally painted. Most of it was actually gouache paints, and that's what got me into gouache painting in the first place. And I've always just loved that kind of style. And yeah. <laughs> you know, you, the, because you do traditional and digital, the transition between one and the other, it's it, it isn't always as smooth. Uh, however, it seems like you don't have that much of a problem with it. Uh, would you say that your techniques on traditional uh, help you with the way that you work on digital or like vice versa? Do you find them compatible? I basically approach digital art the same way as I would traditional. Um, I keep things kind of loose and sketchy and uh, scratchy as well so that, you know, if I need to change something, I can, you know, I just go, oh, well, I'll just change that. It's no big deal. And that's the same with traditional as well. I mean, there's no difference to me between digital and traditional, except, you know, digital's not as messy. <laughs> <laughs> do, and, you, uh, do you yeah, often, when you're doing straight, traditional, go to the go to the control set, control alt set, oh, <laughs> there is no way to go back. Yeah, control alt C, <laughs> oh, damn, I can't. Go back. Oh, there's no undo that button happens. on a canvas. Oh, well. That happens to me as well. That happens to me <laughs> as well. It's a nuisance. Oh. <laughs> Well, at least you know. I, I disagree. Tip X is totally the controls out of the real world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then when you're yeah. working on the computer, you cannot put Tip X on the screen. You go put Tip X on the screen. Oh no, I ruined my monitor. I'll have you know that I'm very happy with my smiley face in the corner, which is drawn on with Tip X. <laughs> wow, I, I never thought I would hear hear Tip X mentioned on this show before. I think this is the first. Go back to the check the tapes. <laughs> no, I, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. <laughs> I demand you go back and check. Uh, no, it's, we have 177 episodes on. So for me so, to go back in time to search for all of them is impossible. So, I know. Yeah, you say you use, you use wash. Um, do you think that is a, that is better than like acrylic painting or have you tried something else besides wash? Like any other technique that you said, ah, no, this doesn't work for me. Um, with gouache, it's, um, it's like using watercolors, except the colors are more chalky. When you put them on the canvas, they don't run. So mm. it's it's like instead of like painting, it's you can use gouache for minor details and highlights and things like that. Or um, yeah, you can really draw with the paint, which you can't really do with acrylic and watercolors. They tend to be quite soft and. Uh, yeah, I I like putting as much detail in in these things as I possibly can. Do you mix uh, techniques as well? With gouache, it, it's uh, usually paint that over the top of acrylic. You can't really use. Well, you can, I guess, but uh, with with it's me, not... I like painting yeah. gouache over the top of acrylic. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I like mixing techniques and uh, experimenting with what looks good and what doesn't. You know, just we have to we have to talk a lot about uh, yeah, just having fun, different really. techniques and <laughs> uh, yeah, because be this is this is a, you have no idea how lonely I feel sometimes because I am like I want to talk about these kinds of things and see what is the best and all that and share techniques and like cut by some things. <laughs> ah, I... Now I want to talk about watercolors and see if you have your, your, your favorite brand of watercolors is the same as mine. I, <laughs> I don't use watercolors that often, I'm afraid. Oh. Yeah, because I discovered do you, do you gouache. To, so, do, you want me yeah. to, do you want me to get you a set of watercolors to try and see uh, how I, you like I them? have a few sets of watercolors, so... <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> I'm more of a watercolor guy. It's because of the layer, kind of yeah. nature of the watercolors, because it's like, it, it works by layers. So uh, mm-hmm. it's similar to working with like working with Photoshop. So, uh. so Mandy, <laughs> I'm looking here on your YouTube, and you had a debate about traditional art or digital art. So, yeah, what's your thought about that? 
like you have a five minute long video here, so I'm trying to remember what I said in the video, so I'm not contradicting myself. <laughs> um, Contradiction yeah. is magic. Yes, con what are you doing to me? Seriously, <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah, the that video in particular was talking um, just more about when like some people tend to favour one over the other, and for me, it should never be that way. I mean. The computer is another creative tool that people can use to create something. You know, it's it's uh, it should never replace traditional altogether. It should enhance it really, and you know, traditional techniques can be adopted into digital things. I mean, you know, you've got like vectored artists, and uh, you know, a lot of digital art tends to be very clean and clear, mm -hmm. and that's just not my style at all. I have tried and tried and tried to keep things clean and neat, and I'm, I'm like, no, nope, that's just not me. So I just approach digital art the same way as I did uh, traditional. It took me a while to kind of find my style and work out what um, techniques worked, because it did take a while for me to get used to using the drawing tablet. Yeah, looking at the screen instead of, you know, the pen that's in your hand, the bit of paper in front of you or canvas or whatever, you're looking at a screen which uh, wasn't very comfortable to begin with, but I, I got used to it. The argument that is usually had is that, um, especially if you're trying to sell digital art, a lot of people are like, well, why should we pay for it? You just made it on a computer. It's not like you have to pay for materials or, you know, paints or anything. And you're like, well, yeah, you're seeing the final product, and yes, it is a digital piece, and okay, yes, I didn't need to necessarily buy paints for that, but, you know, that final piece you're looking at maybe had, like, a whole sketchbook full of preliminary sketches or hours of researching into, like, various anatomy or uh, mythologies and uh, things like that, and, you Not know... Not only that, but people don't really know... You need to have a special kind of training to know how to work with digital artwork. Like, it, you need yeah, to learn how to work the, compu yeah. the computer program, to work with a tablet. Like, not everybody can do that. Wait, you but do? Holy like, <laughs> hell, I've been far uh, behind. Yeah, it's like, you know, you just put a hat on and you just know how to do things right away. You know, that's what yeah. they like, oh, hat well, <laughs> unless you have, what unless is, you have, I knew I was doing something wrong. No, you know, unless <laughs> you can discover the trick to use the make pretty art button, which is what many artists, they, yes. they, this is something that you cannot see on a streaming because they disconnect the make pretty art button as soon as they are streaming. But when they are not streaming, they just press that button and spend the rest of the day playing video games while the picture is done by itself. Oh, yeah. That, that's what I do. I mean, no, I never done that. I have never done that. Yeah. No. See, I knew it. <laughs> I bloody knew it. What that money is paying for is obviously it's paying for your time. It's paying to like, ensure that any equipment you're, you're using, if you need to replace pen nibs, batteries and that, or, you know, it is actually, it's, it's paying for more than what people think. It might be paying for the, like the software and if you're using that. So there's lots of various other costs into that, that, that do need covering, which is so, when people say, why should I pay for digital art? I'm like, well, let me show you. <laughs> well, it does bring up a good reason too, because, well, digital art yeah. and traditional art are basically the same in cost. One takes more time than the other, because one, if you do a mistake on traditional, you can try. If you do a mistake on digital, you can just control Z. If you do a mistake on traditional, you're basically screwed unless it's a well, small Norman, mistake. We don't call them. We don't call them mistakes. We call them happy accidents. <laughs> oh, hey, man. Yes. Let's let's have a little Bob Ross in here, please. <clears throat> All right. No, but <laughs> let's do some happy trees. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. But still, but still, I mean, I I can see the amount of cash that's put in because if you buy a traditional art, let's just say an original piece, that can go for over. Well, if I when I went to Singapore and saw Andy Price's work, one of his work cost about five hundred bucks. That's the cheapest I saw. So that is a good example of, hey, I can sell this much because this is a original piece, not yes. a sketch or a color of print. He he sells prints; they're much cheaper. But if you want the original, it's going to cost you a big load of cash. It's yes. Andy Price. Come on, he's worth it. Mm, true, true, true. But true. some of the um, traditional stuff that I sell, I think one of them um, sold through through a local gallery. It sold 
for about nine hundred pounds, whereas prints of the same piece would maybe be between thirty and fifty pounds. Wow. So it's a big jump, and a lot of the digital art sells for around the same price as what a, a reproduction print would be. Um, they were take unless it's a commission, of course, then it's a lot more because hmm. I can't I can't reproduce and resell it. So. I mean, like nine hundred pounds for one painting sounds like a lot, but obviously most of that money is it, it's you're paying for your time, <laughs> as well as all the materials. So yeah, <laughs> true, true. You have that to to well put into what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, consideration, yes, to put into consideration. And also, traditional art doesn't really sell as quickly or as readily as digital does. So yeah, not, yeah, not in this time, well. not in this time and day. Like everything, it must be instant in this day and age. More or less, yeah. It depends on what industry you're working in. If you're working in the uh, uh, contemporary art and design industry or, you know, the art and animation industry, it, it's it's a completely different ballgame, really. Yeah. Hmm. Tends to be a lot more time, well, in my experience anyway, a lot more time and understanding in working with in the contemporary fine art business, usually. Whereas in the art and animation, there is a lot more deadlines to meet. Mm, so, yeah. so Mary, do you, I'm guessing that during college you went to a, an art school, right? Mm-hmm. So during art school, do you did any sculpture design or anything like that? Just as a I did particular some um, assemblage art, which um, I can't remember the proper phrase for it. But you're basically finding ready-made objects and uh, putting some various items together and making them into something else and <laughs> basically you know, like a three dimensional collage. Uh yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. But okay. um the artist Marcel Duchamp or um Salvador Dali, who is who was my favourite artist ever, um Whoa! did some assembly art where um so you know, Salvador Dali made the uh, lobster phone. <laughs> and Marcel Duchamp um did the um well it was basically just a urinal. Oh. But he, he yeah. flipped it, he flipped it upside down and called it something else. And it was put in a gallery and called art. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like that... basically, um, taking something that's ready made and, uh, changing what it's actually made to do and, you know, changing the uh, purpose of it. You know? But I, um, I thought that the, I thought that the, that, that journal, Sculpture, that was, if we can call it that, I thought that was part of the Dadaism movement. You know, uh, you yeah. know what Dadaism Dada is? Was, was the Dadaism or Dadaism, whatever, it kind of spawned from surrealism, kind of. Well, talking about sculptures, right? Hasbro recently did, uh, well, uh, they created sculptures of quote unquote friends throughout history and turned them into ponies. And, uh, well, interestingly enough, if you do click on the show notes, we have a picture of Optimus Prime and Bumblebee, Bert and Ernie, Lucy and I forgot the name. I'm trying to look for it. So that is cool. Like Hasbro doing that. Anybody know who they are? Like I'm trying really hard to look. Let me look into it no. because I didn't even notice. Where is, where is this? In the show notes. Uh, I think third link. Oh, the thing that I never read. So. Yeah. No, okay. Okay. Yo. Did they have the Monopoly guy and the bank as two best friends as well? <laughs> no, I don't see them in there. Oh. Let's see, what is it that you're talking about? Hasbro celebrating friendship is day with 25 best friends and some light upon that? Yeah, there's the link. So yeah, uh, I see, yeah, okay. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, okay, I think that what we have here are like, well, of course, the Customs. Transformers, the, yeah, the ones. I think that these others, in fact, I think that the one in the bottom, uh, the one on the, on the column, the one with the, the blue dress, isn't that the girl from Bioshock Infinite? No, no. I, I have it here open and we got, Lucy and Ethel oh, from Luc- oh, Love, I Love you, Lucy at the top. Right. And then yes. Le- That's I Love Lucy. Laverne, Laverne and Shirley? I don't know where they are. Laverne and Shirley. Laverne and Shirley. Who are they from? Does anyone know? La- Laverne and Shirley. No idea. Maybe Shirley Temple? No, I don't think so. And I have no idea what Clueless is. Clueless is... I am just the uh, title. Clueless. 19... It, apparently they're from I Love Lucy as well. Oh, Laverne wow. and Shirley? Mm-hmm. Mm. But, you know, these are cool. Like these are custom ponies officially made by Hasbro. And I'm just thinking, will they put this out for print, like for reels? Because I don't no. mind. No. They cost too much, probably. 
Oh, well, at least they could do for Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. They're Hasbro property. Of course, they can afford their Hasbro property. Yeah. yeah, so they're Hasbro oh, property. Well. So that's at least something in the bag. They don't need to pay extra. I want that Optimus Prime pony. I want that Optimus <laughs> Prime pony. Uh, I want that Opti Pony Prime now. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> A comment on it, or if they are real and or prototypes, the prices will be high. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If they don't transform, I'm going to get very angry. No, they don't. Come on. They better transform into a gun, <laughs> or a cannon, or a pistol, or a knife, no, or a no, axe. No, they don't. No, no, no they don't. Ah, oh, oh, manly! Oh, oh, yeah, it's one on the right of some sort of car. Well, it's Bumblebee. He's a Mustang. Or bug. Doesn't look like a car. No, Bumblebee used to be a bo- Volkswagen Beetle, but then Michael Bay arrived and he said, I'm gonna make everyone Marshall cars. You and do I'm know, like, oh, you do know why the Bumblebee's not in the movie, right? The, the original bug? Yeah, because I, th- I think it's because of copyright. No, reasons, because, or because they didn't want, the, because why? he died. <laughs> Done, oh, done, no. done. Oh no. Spoilers. Well, the movies don't follow the canon of the TV show anyway. Yeah, yeah, true. If the that. TV show has any canon at all, so. Mm, true <laughs> that, true that. But. Come on. What are you going to put Transformers Beast Wars in the canon? Anyway, let's not talk about the stupid man cartoons. Let's talk about Pony again. <laughs> no! <laughs> no. Uh, well, unfortunately for us, Twy, the season 5 is on a really long hiatus, and we have to wait. But fortunately for us, 30 new songs are on its way. And the 2017 movie, they're going to have a live orchestra. So that's cool if you like the music. I love music. Yay, music, music is good. Music is, music is good. Not a big fan of orchestra. I might give it a shot. It's the magical mystery cure. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. And you're mentioning that. And 30 new songs on its way. Like, when are they going to fit it all in? All in one episode, all two. <laughs> Oh, God. It's going to be a two-parter, and it's just going to be song after song after song. There's going to be no talking in between, just constant songs. Oh. <laughs> well, so just speaking and at the end, every pony in Equestria gets turned into an alicorn. Oh, uh, so wait, if everybody's an alicorn... How are you going to be special then, <laughs> huh? Huh? Mm? Mm? There's our mm? queen of the alicorns. <laughs> Uh, you can be queen, it will make you instantly evil. Oh, wait, that's why you can <laughs> yeah, be queen, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, wow, but <laughs> this is interesting, this is interesting. I, The second part of the season is going to be filled with songs. And if you guys notice that um, that Tony Award winner, who was it again that sang? I forgot. She has a big role coming up with songs. Lena Hall? Yeah, Lena Hall. She has a song coming up too, so... Yay. Yes, she does. Much song, much awesomeness. Mm-hmm. Did, uh, okay, Norman, did you, uh, because I haven't been on mm-hmm. the latest episodes, um, from what I remember, but has any of you talked about the poster they released for season five? Which one? Yeah, the, the, the poster the where they the brought the out them. characters. Yeah. Did that, you guys talk about it? No, we didn't. Point? No, we didn't. Uh, we should talk about it because among the characters that are blocked are the QD Mark Crusaders. Yeah, true, true. Why Cutie would they marks. cover the cutie mark? Cutie marks. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny that you mentioned that. Um, someone look at the they like the website data or whatever they do when they do some computer smart stuff and reveal a few of the CMC's supposedly cutie marks. Probably. So I don't know. Season five is going to be a season where the CMC gets their cutie mark. Probably. You know, the one thing that I like about this show and related to this is that they treat every season like it's the end of the series. Like, they leave no cliffhanger. Like, they don't do one thing that uh, many other TV shows like doing, especially live-action shows, where they end the series, or they end the season with a cliffhanger to continue with the rest of the story on the next season. Now, My Little Pony doesn't do that. They uh, One will say that that kills the mis- the mystery of it, but I'd say that's actually a very safe bet. Mm. Because if you treat the end of a season like it's the end of the series, you leave no loose threads, or at least you don't leave any storylines that are the, the main storylines, you don't leave them unfinished, you don't make anybody angry, and best of all, you don't fall into the Duke Nukem Forever syndrome, which is you well, build a lot of, you have a lot of build up, and then when the, when the payoff, when it's time to deliver the payoff, it's a big disappointment, which is what always happens whenever a TV show leaves a, a season with a cliffhanger. 
So, if they treat Season 5 like it's the end of the series, which we don't know, there is Season 6 coming along, mm -hmm. but if they do that, and they end up giving the Cutie Mark Crusaders their Cutie Marks, I actually think that is a very good way to, like, move the character forward, or at least stop with the teasing of, oh, are they gonna get it? Are they gonna get it? Are they gonna get it? No! Because we hate you secretly. <laughs> Give us our money. Give us your money. Yes. Well, at least we do know that if the CMCs do get their QD work this season, they can do more with them. Like, they, we don't need to get the whole question of, is this episode going to get their cutie mark? No, cutie we'll find out. Fair. The people who make this show are massive trolls towards the <laughs> they fandom. It's <are>. <laughs> so like one of them recently, I think it was Megan, posted a picture of a panda on a Twitter saying, this is what you yeah. want, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, they yeah, probably yeah, yeah, are yeah. just the normal cutie mark crusaders. There's nothing new about them. They're just blacking That's what them I out was to thinking. trollers. <laughs> Twilight, you read my mind. That is exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that they don't have any cutie marks and they are just covering them for the sake of, like, you know, pissing uh, us off. Probably. If you look at the poster uh, linked, I want to know that is in the far back. Oh, he has a weird pose. Oh, good. Oh. Okay. One, the one thing I wouldn't be happy with is if they gave them the kitty marks, because then I'd be like, oh, well, they got the kitty marks. That looks like that looks like a monster, actually. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. You're but, right. You know, it looks like it has it a horn, so it could be a unicorn. Probably. But you know what? Like, no. Six other corn officially. It's <laughs> Queen Chris Hollis. She's back. Ah! <laughs> Oh, or it could wow. be his, her husband. She is a queen, and for every queen there wow. must be a king. What wow. twist! It's, it's King Larvae, his back to revenge. <laughs> but you know it's what? It's movie Slater run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. But still, but still. This poster here, I, I do like how they tease it, though. Like, all the Blackout characters, like, okay, you figure it out. Like, the front here, CMCs, haha. You, there's the CMCs, and then for whatever Kaden's, reason. And then... Cadence and Shining Armor with a cake that has a cradle on it. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, if you look oh, at the cake, God. it's a baby, it's a baby oh, cradle on it. Whoa. Adding, adding to the theory that Princess Skyla is actually uh, Shining oh, Armor. Oh, someone shoot cake. me. No, you okay. know what? It's better because for a moment they were saying that Princess Skyla was Twilight's daughter. No, no, uh, no. And no. We, were like, we were like, wow. That, that Let's did, not get that. No. The Sparkle family keeps things within the family in this. No, no, no. To no. be fair, it is an official toy, Princess Skylar. It is a princess. parents yeah. are Twilight Sparkle and Prince Blue Blood. No, 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 no. So. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, Maddie, what do you think of this? Like, what do you think of this? <laughs> I can see Bear do well at the right in the hat. <laughs> Right, oh, between the core and the... No, the no, hugger? that's not that. Uh, those are the <laughs> apples. Which one of the... Apple? You mean that could be Brain Bird? No, no, no. Uh, could, sorry, those are the pies, the rock. The rock family. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so that Jebediah-looking pony. Mm -hmm. Think you might have put the poster up on your show for the video. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll put it in the link. I'll put you're it gonna in the link. Have to put the, yeah, you're gonna have to put this in the video or else people are gonna get lost. Yeah, I'll just put it in the link in there so people will just see what we're seeing. Are you? But, I wonder if that Pinky Pie's family to a right. You're right, we should. Oh, I just know there's yeah, another yeah. one at the very top. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, but, but anyway, anyway, <sighs> let, let's see. We, we, the movie, Life Orchestrated Songs, anybody like that? Yeah, we do. Yeah. We are brownies here. Of course we like it. Come on. I mean, if you think about it, they're having Life Orchestrated Songs, and if I do remember right, um, Dan Ingram told, the people who were hiring before that uh, live orchestrated symphony is a bit expensive to use. So, the 2017 movie having that, they have a lot of budget. Well, duh. <laughs> to be fair, it's a fully pony film, and they know there's a fandom, mm -hmm. and everyone's going to watch it. Yeah, true that. And then true everyone that. will probably buy toys from it. Not yeah, true. <laughs> So what? Oh, what and then people the will have to review it. <laughs> oh yeah. boy! No, but honestly <laughs> speaking, honestly speaking, right? And like, do a blind reaction to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! No, so I true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so true. The reviewers are going to have a field day with this one. But okay, um, let's just say we go for theory crafting and whatnot, or just whatever the word's called. What do you guys expect for the 2017 movie? Like, is it going to be 
animated the same way or is it going to be like IRL or even ponies 3D it, it's going to be live action in real life ponies <laughs> yeah, just, you know what is they're just going to get some die and die the coats of real ponies I know exactly the what they are going to what they are going to do have you seen the Smurfs yeah well, what they are going to do or Alvin and the Chipmunks what they uh. are going to do they are going to travel through, the movie is going to start 2D animated and then they're going to travel through a portal that turns them into 3D animated and they're going to end up in Manhattan, not Manhattan, like the real world Manhattan, and then they're going to meet with Neil Patrick Harris, who is a brony, and he has to hook up with a girl. So they are going to help him get up, get on with the girl while quoting a lot of brony memes and brony stuff, and it's going to be the best movie ever. Yeah, the background is going to be the live orchestra with Lady Gaga, who is also a brony. Yeah. Things. Yeah, and uh, there's going to have a lot of cameos, and the real Talastron is going to appear, and then John DeLance is going to be there looking like, what have I done with my career? This was a big mistake. <laughs> and they're going to go a brony convention. It's going to be so massive. <laughs> yeah, and Seth MacFarlane is going to be there fighting with a giant pinky fighter. No, wait a minute, they did that in Ted too. Never mind. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. Well, and as you can tell, we are, <laughs> we are very cynical about the 2017 animated movie. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I'm just guessing the people I have here is not interested in talking about this. No, 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 it's not that. Uh, it's not okay, much no, to talk about. There's nothing it's, being released about it. There is true. nothing to say about it because we don't have a, a synopsis. We don't have... Even a release date, it says 2017. It could be December 21st, 2017, or January 1st, 2017. Mm-hmm. We don't know who is... We know who's writing it. It's been written by the guy who did Ice Age 4. And also, uh, Megan is helping, if I remember right. Megan is helping with the story. Jason Thiessen is also working on the movie as well. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, um, who was that guy? Um, C- CM2 or something like that that's helping? Used to be uh, the it's... VP of Hasbro? Yes, uh, C- uh, CM2. Yeah, yeah, that guy. He's also working on the. He's also working on the movie. I mean, it's just we don't know. We know a lot of who is behind it. Mm-hmm. We don't know what it is about. Oh. We don't know what it's gonna be about, and we don't know if it's going to be the end of the series, like it was with uh, Serenity and Firefly, mm-hmm. or if it's going to be the middle point of the series, like the X Files movie was. <laughs> well, we don't know. We don't know. Imagine Firefly <laughs> makes me cry. <laughs> Uh, well, it's it's okay, Twilight. It's okay. It's fine. Come here. Cry, cry on my shoulder. The thing I do know about, well, I hope it's not true, is that most of Hasbro's movies have been iffy at some point. Like, you Are s- you talking about the Transformers well, movies? Well, we have the Transformers, the G.I. Joe. Do you know that Michael Bay is not behind them? And <laughs> it's Stephen Sommers. Well, I, mean, I hope not. Well, I, I, Shia LaBeouf isn't going to be in it. Yeah. Shia LaBeouf has a spike the dragon. <laughs> he'll he'll just keep on screaming, "Do it!" Actual pony cannibal, Shia LaBeouf. No, no, no. He will be. He will be. No, 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 no. Oh no! You want a pony movie? Just do it. <laughs> he will be wearing a paperback throughout the entire movie, <laughs> saying, "I'm not horse famous anymore." <laughs> uh, no, wait a minute. That's gonna be me when I go to back next year. Oh no, God, no. <laughs> Don't get you the bag. I'm not sure I can get one big enough for your head, though. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's 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 okay, Twally. We can put two bags together, then that will be. Oh uh, well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Maddie. If you have any, <laughs> if you have anything to well chime in, do so. Like it's all. I'm it's sorry all if we are overwhelming. I'm, I'm sorry that we are overwhelming you, yeah. uh, Maddie. No, it's fine. I'm just listening. Uh, you, you can clearly tell that we. No, you, you, you can you, you can chime in. What do you think about where what they are doing so far with the 2017 movie? Like, what what are your thoughts on it? Well, like I said, there's not really been much released on it. So, um, what what I'm wondering is if are they going to end um, Gen Four with this movie, or is it going to carry on after it? So, you know, is this going to be a, a grand finale kind of thing? You, you know how I mentioned before, like, how every season ends, like, it's going to be the end of the series? hmm If they were to end the series, like, if they were to end the series after each one of those season finales, uh, me personally, I will be perfectly okay with it. Uh, but I don't know what they are going to do with this movie, if they are going to go on the same route. This is kind of scary if you think about it. To like... be fair, they haven't even said it's going to be a G4 movie. 
True. Exactly. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. G five movie where the G one characters come back. It and could be like... like the start of the next generation. We wouldn't oh, know. Wow. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to add. Don't to that make as well. me hurt you by that. <laughs> <laughs> then again, why wouldn't it? Why would that be a bad idea? No, I don't know, I mean, because it's the expectation, there's, really. There's been, there's been fans of Generation 1 that have kept go- being fans of My Little Pony since, like, they, they are the guys who had it rough. They had to endure seasons, uh, Generations 3 and 3.5. Well, or like, there should be are... a massive troll and it's a G3.5, I feel. <laughs> No. It's a, it, no, 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 I get it. It's a re-release of um, A Very Minty Christmas. Oh, God, no. In HD. Yeah. No. You know what? Actually, be honest. A Very Minty Christmas is actually a pretty funny yeah, movie. Yeah, but not in the theaters like they're doing here right now. I would go watch A Very Minty Christmas in the theaters. Uh. <laughs> That's that's actually how funny I am. It has one of the best line reads I have ever <laughs> heard in my life. Isn't that the one with the song about getting socks for Christmas? Yes, yes. that's the one with the socks. It's it's when they are kind of like setting up the Christmas tree and they break a Santa doll or something. And it's like I something like terrible film. happened. Does that I film broke. Made a brownie sent me socks for Christmas in the mail. <laughs> Weird. I broke Santa. You broke Santa. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch Makes that, me yeah. laugh every time. I, I I actually like that movie. It's very funny. All oh, right. Okay. And it's a G three movie. It's a G three movie. So yeah, not everything in G three is trash, guys. Come on. All right. All right. I'll I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. But hey, yeah. the 2017 movie, I hope it is awesome and I hope it does carry some of the G4 characters over. Like, I know how movies are and they want to carry in big names like maybe Dwayne Johnson or, I don't know, think of a big name and you can think... Uh, Vin you can, Diesel. Yeah, Vin Diesel and put it yeah, in yeah. the movie. But I do hope they still carry on with what they have, like Tabitha St. Germain... Um, Terra Strong. They keep the same voice actors. I that's good. Personally, hope it's a film about them passing the elements type of thing onto the next Ooh. lot. That would that would be something awesome too. At least <laughs> the if they do carry on with the next generation, they'll have some element of the old one and carry over to the new one. That'll be cool. Because th- this season's all about friendship and letting other ponies save the day. <laughs> so true. So true. Don't mind, don't mind it. Like, it's, we're 2017, we still have the sixth season to coming on 2016, so yay. Yay! <laughs> that's better. Alright, yay. <laughs> but, yay! But anyway, that, yay. that's the talk for the news. So, you mentioned something about the movie coming out in this year? Like, Rainbow Rocks, not Rainbow Rocks. Yep. No, it's Tem- not Rainbow Rocks, it's the French game. something, I need to look it up again. <laughs> uh, okay. you, you can clearly tell that we're derping. So, Maddie, <laughs> uh, I heard that you're going to a con soon? Yeah, that's, uh, there'll be, um, Ronnie Scott in November. Ah. <laughs> Someone's excited. <laughs> it's September 26th. September Friendship 20th. Games will be aired. Yeah. Ooh, wow. Yeah. I'm hoping to have the, I'm going to be reviewing that because I reviewed the first two, so. Yeah, hopefully that will be released before Brony Scott, but uh, I'm not I'm not sure because I have a lot of stuff to catch up on. But yeah, I'll be going to Brony Scott in November, and I have a few cons planned for next year, but they're not set in concrete yet. I'm trying to um, get to Buck next year, mm. hoping, hoping, but um, yeah, it all depends. It. If, uh, <laughs> it's uh, lo- lots sorry, of sorry, uh, sorry. yeah. You know, I'm trying to go Just to Buck next year. There, that's the problem. Oh, no, everyone no, should. I've got the tickets. Everyone needs to come. Yeah, you, 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 while you I'm doing your bloody I'm snapshot. So waiting to walk. see who needs vendor tickets <laughs> because I can't go. I can't go to conventions unless it's to vend ah. to sell things. Yeah, otherwise it's. Uh, the expense is just too much for me, really. Mm, so I, am, um, I, am with I don't know when party. Buck is going to be releasing the cost of vendor tickets. I'm still waiting to find that out. So I yeah. am waiting on that as well. And and until they and they'll have to approve you as well. All that. Yeah. 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 And that's all that you still have to. Um, yeah. There's not much time left to go. No, really. It's the, no, less than so half a year because. To, yeah. Especially if you travel quite far, you've got to book your travel accommodation, travel and accommodation even. That's why I've been chasing it up because I'm desperate to go 
But we'll see. There's lots of other cons next year that are in the pipeline, but I can't say because it's, yeah, it's. You know, set. you know what, you know what you could do. <laughs> no. uh, can I give you a, a, a little bit of advice because it's similar to what I'm doing? Sure. Is that uh, make one convention your yearly trip to go to that convention and? Yeah, uh, that's no, only Scott for me. That's yeah, that's and, that's Bronny Scott for me as well. I am going to turn Bronny Scott into the one on one and only convention that I want to go every year. Also because I have a lot of friends in Scotland and I have gone to Scotland like this this will be the I think this is the tenth time that I go to Scotland actually. Counting mm-hmm. last year and everything. Uh, it's it's become a second house for me. <laughs> I I love the place, love Edinburgh, I think it's a beautiful city. Um, I don't mind the weather at all. You will consider that me coming from Spain, the south and all that, that I wouldn't ma- manage to handle the cold, but oh my god, I can't, I need the cold. It's so goddamn hot in here. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I am turning Bronny Scott into the convention that I go every year and I am not missing yeah. it for the world. Yeah, there's, so there's, uh, Bronny Scott, the other yearly convention, well, I'm hoping it's gonna run next year is, uh, um, it's called D-Con. It's short for Dundee Convention or anime convention or um, comic convention, whatever. And that's my hometown. That's where I was born. So I'm trying to get to that every year and uh, kind of branch out more. There was a convention in um, Aberdeen a couple of months ago that I didn't vend at, but I went to it just to see how it, how it was. Um, it was. It was good. It just needed a bigger bigger venue. There used to be a comic convention that ran in in Inverness, which is much closer to where I am, and yeah, sadly that doesn't happen anymore, but um, oh. yeah. Is Brownie sadly. Scott only one day? Uh, it was supposed to be two now. days, but now it's shortened to one. But for now, it's, uh, but for now it's one day. Oh, I ahead. might Sorry, be man. able to go then. Ooh. <gasps> oh! Oh! Because they they have the rock concert, the, the rock Nessie <laughs> concert on the twenty first of uh, November, and then the the second day of the convention is the twenty second. Oh, wow. now now you're making me jelly. The last I heard, it was shorted to one day, but I could yeah. be wrong. The ori- the original plan back in two thousand and fourteen was to have a two day convention, but they didn't shorten it to one day, and yeah. uh, it, it all happened during during that one Saturday, and it was a very intense day. Let me tell you, wow. it was like activity, 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 non stop. I didn't even sleep the night before. <laughs> wow, you're, oh, making me you're making me jelly. You're making me jelly. I really want this, to go now. This year is going to be different mm-hmm. because I am actually staying at the hotel of the convention. Oh. So, oh, yeah, sweet. I'm saving, I'm saving myself a lot of time and space and 17 pounds of a, a train ticket. Mm. Yeah, back and forth. That was ridiculous. <laughs> oh wow, I, I wish I could so, go. Yeah. I wish I could go. This time, take my merchandise. Going back to the lo- to the to the uh, ground floor, then done. Take it back to the room. There you go. That's it. Yeah. Now let's go get some drinks. Yay! <laughs> but anyway, with the whole talk of convention and making me jelly of going there, like, uh, do you guys know how much my currency is costing me right now? Like versus the dollar, I'm going to go broke. Ay, ay, ay. Five hundred ringgit per dollar. Uh, f- no, no, no. Oh wow. Well. Worse. No, I, pff, let's just say that um, you, if you do, if you guys come here, you'll be rich. What? Yep. Problem is, why would you want to go there? Vacation. <laughs> but w- no. no, if you go there on vacation, you will end up in the island of Lost. You cannot <laughs> throw the airplanes. Are <laughs> oh, you jerks? Uh, Malaysia's so bad that planes appear in the Bermuda Triangle when they go there. <laughs> Yeah, they are like, what the hell happened? And then you realize that Super Mario is there with the warp flute. Mm. Like, that's what happened. Somebody was playing a warp, a, a warp whistle. And they <laughs> oh, wow. To another area. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, uh, any questions for Maddie here before we kind of wrap it up? Um, I think I ran out of questions, actually. I want to keep talking about art stuff because that's fascinating. Mm-hmm. Maybe in another show then. Maybe in another, in another show. show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I guess everybody has things to do. I have things to do. True, so, true. But I have nothing to 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 ask Maddy for now. Mm. Oh, Maddy, did didn't oh. you came here once before in the review show? Yeah. Oh, good times, good times. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, oh. we talk about Pinkie Pie and yaks. I had to leave really abruptly. Uh, sadly. No, nobody noticed. Nobody noticed. <laughs> Editing magic. Nobody noticed. Editing is magic. 
I know. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Norman's good at making people disappear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's good. He's Malaysian after all. I know. Malaysian, <laughs> not magician. Don't get them confused. Uh, same difference. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, but anyway, uh, Medi, thank you for coming on, and well, you're most welcome to come on again. Oh, yay! That would be awesome. But anyway, um, I think I can wrap it up. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow@gmail.com. If you want to catch us on the twitters, the show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. Sweetie, but we'll mm, well tweet about stuff. I'm not 100 percent sure what she does anymore. And I have a concern, Norman. What? The host of the show is very Malaysian. Please uh, change it. <laughs> Shut up. As it's okay, I'm taking over. <laughs> As no, and then in that case, the, the host of the show will be too British. <laughs> change it. <laughs> no. British invasion. Uh, We've we done that before. We've done that before. But anyway, as for... Polish invasion. <laughs> as for me, you can... Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, Oh my god. No. Sorry, I meant to say pony invasion. No, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, anyway, it's for me, you can get you at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, toys, food, and whatever things my fancy. And James, where can I find you, man? Uh, under your bed at night. No, wait a minute. That's not, you're not supposed to know that. Cut that out. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter on, uh, the, on James Lower Dash Cork. Or you can find me on DeviantArt on jamescork.deviantart.com. <laughs> And you can check out my Ask Pony Tumblr on askmoviesleet.tumblr.com. And Ru, what about you, man? Well, you can find me at my Twitter at Relicious underscore art. I post about random stuff, and I'm just kicked at start in my webcomic series called Another Day in the Gallery, featuring me, yours truly, and my OCs, mm-hmm. kicking butt and whatnot, and reposting, retweeting other artists' webcomics and stuff. If you're looking for a read, you can check that out. Or my Tumblr, reliciousgalley.tumblr.com, where I repost, reblog, excuse me, reblog other artists, artworks, and tutorials in case you're looking for how to do stuff. You can check that out. And King, what about you, man? Kick-Ass King, DeviantArt, Kick-Ass King, Tumblr, Ask Backstage Ponies, Tumblr, Kick-Ass King 1, YouTube, Steam, Xbox, yada yada. <laughs> no one wants to see where I am anyway, so it doesn't really Oh, yeah, yeah we do. do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, they do. They want to know where you are so they don't go there. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, that's just mean. <laughs> that's just mean. Just like Spain. <laughs> yeah, that's like, hey. <laughs> uh, what about you, Toy? Uh, Equestria spreading friendship. <laughs> so basically every week then. All right, you then. Know. Put on an episode and that's where she, that's where she is. Yep. And Mary, what about you? Where can they find you? You can find me on, um, Deviant Art where I post, uh, journals almost on a daily basis. Uh, just, uh, telling people what I've been up to and, uh, yeah, put, uh, you post videos. I am so tired, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you can find me on Deviant Art, um, Amy Madman Art or Mad Munchkin Art and Illustration, one of the two. And I'm also on, um, the, there's an official Mad Munchkin Facebook page. You can find me there and post various updates on that for what's uh, the next video is going to be, or you know any artwork I'm doing, or um, live streams like this. I post them on that page as well. And uh, yeah, also of course you can find me on YouTube where the Mad Munchkin Blather Show is posted and uh, um, various uh, speed draw videos and things like that. And um, there was one more thing, and I can't remember what it is. That's good. Yeah, um, Patreon. <laughs> oh yes, you, um, yeah, you can um, support me on um, Patreon, and um, I also have two online shops. I have an Etsy shop as well, where you can buy art prints and stuff, and I have an eBay shop as well. Yay! Lots of various things for you guys to check out. So hopefully, all of the links will be below this video. Maybe I don't know. It will. It will. It will. Yay! Or in the show notes. Or in the show notes. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. And also, you can catch us on BonivaLive.com. I'll add that into the show notes. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been a Spanish person. I have been Relicious and always rhymes with Delicious. I'm just me. Deal with it. I've been Princess Twilight Sparkle. I am always Mad Munchkin. (laughs) <laughs> and we'll catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show bro take us out and we'll see you on the next podcast bye bye oh, you moppy <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sorry everyone for you have to listen to that <laughs> <laughs>